me. Yes. Okay. The first question to Edward County. What do you see as the role of a council member when it comes to the Austin City Schools? Well, that also, first and foremost, I graduated from that Austin City Schools, as I told you before, graduated from the alternative school, actually. And so I know the power uh, that teachers and educators have. Uh, there was a, a statistic that came out, two statistics that I want to bring up here. One being that 13% of the students that graduate from Bad Austin High School or, or Bad Austin City Schools, they, go, they, don't, they only go to four year university. And so we have to look and, and work on ways that we can actually uh, work with the community to present other opportunities. Also, mobility, we have to change the mobility. And the answer to mobility, mobility is transit service. And so the way that we're gonna do that is we're gonna have to work with the city uh, and, I'm, and I'm gonna represent the city and vote for things that are gonna change the mobility way. We're the fourth highest in Georgia when it comes to mobility for our school system. And we have to change that. And I'm gonna support and have a plan that is gonna make sure that we do what is necessary to fix the mobility in our school. What do you see as the role of a council member when it comes to Brown Boston City Schools? Yeah. <laughs> uh, back in August, there was a proposal on the board at uh, the council meeting that the elected officials go into the school system and they begin the fellowship, for lack of terms, with the students, giving them different positive avenues and things of that nature. I couldn't agree more with the mobility concept. And I feel like for Valdosta City Schools, we need more elected officials that are going to be advocating for more options for these students, that are going to listen to the needs of the students. Each student is different, and so we're going to need people that are dedicated to giving them the necessary attention, to getting them the help, the focus, and the direction that they need to go where they personally feel will work best for them. Going out in the school system and helping to mentor people uh, and explain the importance of government. And like everyone is saying about the um, transportation, I see if the city has public transportation, it will cut down on them. I don't have a way to school because they have public transportation if they visit school, but they'll cut down the applicant rate. What are your plans to help lower the unemployment level in Valdosta? Well, I want to tackle that from a public transportation issue. Because I realize that a lot of the help that we need in the city is transportation to and from work. When you look at it, Valdosta, Georgia has over 2,200 unemployed individuals, not including college students and children who are of age to work. And so, Enrique Penalosa, mayor of Ogata, said a developed country and community is not where they have, where the poor have cars, but where the rich use public transportation. I think if we can get that public transportation, it can definitely help in the employment rate, because how many people just call in to work, can't get to the interview or where they need to be because they don't have the means to do so. So I feel like with that public transportation, we can curb the poverty and the employment rate in the city. At large candidate too. What are your plans to help lower the unemployment level in our Boston? I'd like to say we need public transportation, but I think that if we promote Valdosta and draw these businesses in here, for example, we have a business coming here that's going to an undeveloped area of Valdosta. On the north, on the south side of town, we have a beautiful industrial park that would cut down the rate of this company actually opening for these jobs to be available quicker because we already have all the infrastructure that we need for them to start building that plant. So if we can get plants to businesses to come in and use these beautiful industrial boulevards that we have already, it'll cut down the time limit which they can build their buildings and we can get those jobs on the market.
what are your plans to help lower the unemployment level? Well, first and foremost, I want to say that I've already started. Uh, last year, I hosted a job fair with a good girl, and we provided over 600 jobs at one time. So I'm not talking about what I want to do or what I might do. I'm talking about something that I'm already doing. Um, I'm already a partner with Goodwill. I'm president of LAP. I'm already partnering with agencies that fix employability issues. I couldn't agree with Mr. Starr and Mr. Tooley in transportation, but also employability. We can bring jobs, but employability is what we have to make sure people have, is that they have the education, they have the skills to make them. So I think you are, I think we, we're talking about two different populations. Um, we're talking about senior citizens and then we're talking about college age. Uh, I think that partnership is, is the biggest thing that we can be the possible to do. Uh, one of those being getting with the students and not deciding what they need, but asking them what they need. Uh, it's so easy to decide what they need based off of our decision. Um, but that's not always the right way to approach a population of people. You approach a population of individuals by ensuring that you ask them what they need, senior, senior citizens, asking them what they need, being involved, being visible, which is uh, what we lack in representation in this um, and being the visibility with the senior citizens so that they'll know that we're here to help and we're available to help them. How do you plan to contribute to the welfare of Dallas' citizens, especially college-age adults and senior citizens? Like what was already said, those are definitely two totally different demographics. And it's not a one-man job. Whoever is elected is going to have to work with the council and the mayor to make sure that everybody is getting the necessary attention. As a college student, I know the job opportunities are, are presented for college students. So what we really need is people that are going to be pounding, making sure that information is present for them, and as far as our senior citizens, making sure that while we're giving attention to our college students, that our senior citizens aren't neglected. I think that's one of the biggest issues that a lot of people in the city face is that heavy sense of neglect. So we're going to make sure that we need to make sure that we have liaisons dispersed throughout the city that are giving everybody the necessary needed attention. Because a lot of people want to know, what are you planning to do? But I think the question is, what can I do for you? And that will really shift the trajectory of the city. How will you work with business owners to increase employment opportunities? Well, I think I've already answered that a little bit as we talked about employability. And of course, we are all, I think we all can say that we want more things for Valdosta. We want Valdosta to be more attractive for businesses. But we also got to make sure that we have individuals that can work in those shops, right? So I think that you know, getting with the businesses to see what it is that they need. Partnership again, 
while you're grads, but also State University, our higher education, making sure that we're partnering with them to make sure individuals are trained, to make sure that they have the skill set, to make sure they have the certification. There's no need to giving a person a job that they're not going to be able to attain. You know, or asking a business what they need, and we had to make sure that we have the needs covered in our community. So we got to get back into the community, back to work in the community back to walking the streets, putting out information to make sure that people know that there's a job available and here are the requirements, but I'm willing to help you meet the requirements. At Large County Strong, how will you work with business and owners to increase employment opportunities? When I was campaigning, I had the opportunity to speak with a lot of local business owners and the problem is there's so much red tape and regulations and restrictions that these businesses have to go through that it's hard for them to even maintain stability in the city. And so one of the things that we need to do is make sure that we are doing some type of give back or sense of appreciation to our local business owners, our small businesses, to let them know that we're here. Uh, I've had people reach out to me to partner with me to make sure we present more opportunities of job openings and positions and posts in the city. And so I, I think if we get that information out, using social media is going to be one of our strongest tactics to make sure that this information is placed in the hands of people who need it the most, the disadvantaged, the dismembered, and so on and so forth, to make sure that they know these opportunities are there, there's somebody that needs your help, and that you can get to them. At Large County, too, how will you work with business and owners to increase employment opportunities? Second chance. I will go and, and ask them to give basically people who made their debt to society second chance. Um, a lot of times on the application, one little box that down there that disqualifies and discourages employees from hiring. That box is are you a no. What if I was a convicted felon when I was 19 when I was 14 years old when I paid my debt to society? That box on that uh, on that application limits me to what I can do, so I would ask them to eliminate at least that one box off the application. So, <coughs> at Los Angeles Stone, how do you plan to involve residents in the decision-making process? <coughs> Good old-fashioned door knock. It's worth time and time before, and I believe it's going to continue to work. We've got to get our feet on the ground. We've got to stay consistent and integrated inside the community. If we do not, the residents will continue to feel overlooked, neglected, and forsaken. What since I, I've noticed something that a lot of the citizens have told me in particular that we cannot continue to, go, to afford to be a crisis council. We only see you in the bad times, but we don't see you when we need you. I was talking to a local resident and that senior citizen told me, he says, we elect you in office, but then once you're elected, we can't get in touch with you anymore. So I feel like we need to remain accessible to the people that we say we're working for. Because if we don't, we shut ourselves out from the opportunities that we could give them and how they could in turn help us as their hands in the community. And large candidate too. How do you plan to involve residents in the decision-making process? <laughs> I, I think that we should televise the council meeting. Everybody doesn't have access to get to the council meeting. But if we was to set up a channel where we publicize and stream this council meeting live and give these people an opportunity to write in uh, their suggestions to send on an issue, it was going to get more involved. Uh, everybody, some people are disabled, are not able to get out, but they want to be involved in our system. What is important now? Building new homes and commercial space or renovating our existing homes and mm -hmm. If we start revamping, 
I believe that it can stand up. commercial space or renovating our existing homes and storefronts. As I was saying before, I believe renovation is definitely important. One of my central focuses is revamping the city. We've got a lot of untapped potential, and if we renovate, it'll save us time and money. We've got residents now that don't necessarily want to move, but they want their homes redone. Why not give these people who are taxpayers and committed citizens in the city what, what they're asking for? So I definitely believe while building is good, can we focus on the issues at hand, which are more important right now, and that's giving a revitalization to those that have been here and put their time in. And large Canada too. What is important now? Building new homes and commercial space? or renovating our existing homes and storefronts. <laughs> okay, that, 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 that's a two-part question to me. By being an inspector, I say that we renovate the commercial space. Uh, that way, we have, we're not taking away a lot of our green space. As far as some of the homes, <laughs> renovation is great, but some of the homes are in so much disrepair, disrepair that they need to be restructured. They need to be rebuilt. Brought up to modern code. Brought up to be safe. Uh, I look at it like this here. I renovated the house that I live in with, the house I was born in, like built uh, 60 years ago. Uh, but I'm comfortable with that because it's renovated, it's modern now. Modernism, if we modernize these people's houses, they feel better about it. Don't keep them up. large candidate members, what is important now? <laughs> Building new homes, <laughs> space, or renovating our existing homes and store. Um, so Clarkson, Georgia, uh, was able to get a federal grant uh, and draw down funds uh, that would, uh, it was a beautification project, which included landscaping. Um, it included landscaping, it included renovating homes, it included fixing uh, things in homes. Uh, they partnered, again, partnership, they partnered with United Way, they partnered with the city, they even partnered with, the, with their school system. And they all pulled their funds together and they decided that these homes are going to be renovated. These homes can't be renovated and we want to place new homes. So you, you can't answer that question in one fashion. You know, we talk about the south side of town. Well, there may be some homes that don't need to be renovated. We may need to, to find a new home to develop a new community. New communities are all down deep. Why can't they be on the south side of the world? So we have to look at all aspects of what is needed in that particular uh, Hope this give you at last council members. <laughs> when you're having fun, post up the time as well. Okay, I thought that was rather fast. I need to get six minutes left, Mr. Moderator. According to the timer. So I have a question here, and are there any more at large questions out there that I can quickly pick up from you? I gotta stress this out for six minutes. Come on down. Oh, you guys understand it. This is good. Here we go. Oh, yeah, wait, I have another. Wait a second. Wait a second. Mayor, you guys can have me run back in as mayor, right? <laughs> Thank you, girl. Appreciate you. At large? <coughs> it's a comment. This is a comment. May I read the comment? Yes. The comment says, gentlemen, when you stand up, we hear you better. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. This question is for at large candidate two. 
What do you have planned for college grads to keep them here when the pay is so low, including the issue? That's what we talk about bringing jobs. We got to attract the industry that pays. Uh, nowadays, you made the industry a, a high tech industry. Computers, everything's computerized. We got to get those type of jobs to come to Valdosta. Um, you know, the days of basically all in the box is over. Everything's so computerized now. We got to keep, to keep these young people in Valdosta. We got to attract those type of businesses. Anytime a business want to relocate, start up, Valdosta should be on their list. First thing come out of their mind is say, we moving to Valdosta. We got to promote ourselves in order to have those types of businesses that we want to come to Valdosta. Because we have all, we have everything you need about us to have a uh, successful business. So create jobs, bring people to Stone. What do you have planned for college grads to keep them here when the pay is so low, <laughs> including VSU? <laughs> <laughs> well, first things first is uh, as a college student, I've got a multiplicity of friends graduate, which I've graduated December 13th. <laughs> uh, first of all, we've got to make Valdosta attractive. I've had a lot of people tell me that I'm going back to Atlanta, I'm moving back to Florida. BSU wasn't my first option. I don't want to be here. There's nothing here for me. So before we can create jobs, before we can sustain a strong economy in the city, we first got to make the city attractive again. It's got to be revamped. It's got to be restructured where our businesses are more friendly. Uh, as this gentleman has said, we've also got to make sure that we're bringing jobs into the city industries and distributions that can accommodate our college graduates. They go home because there's nothing here for them to work for. And so if we do that, then we'll see economic boosts and we'll see more pride in our city from our college students. Because it's also, I've also heard that there is a disconnect and a distance between Valdosta State University and the city of Valdosta. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And large candidate members, what do you have planned for college grads to keep them here when the pay is so low? Including the All right, so a couple things that I already do is I show up almost every year to their part-time job fair as an employee. Um, and as an employer, I find ways to include them in our company. And I have that access, and so I think that we have to get businesses to find ways to include our students <laughs> in what they're doing. And this is not just low for college students. The median income for 31601 is in the 20s. 10% of people in 31601 make less than $10,000. So this is not, it, what, what BSU is feeling is what we're all feeling, right? And so we're gonna have to change the entire climate of what we do so that when they graduate, they wanna stay because they're looking at our smiling faces, right? <laughs> Running on the subject. Okay, that's cool for me. I'm going to take one minute to wrap it up. One minute to wrap it up. Is that okay, time or anything? I'll raise it. One minute to wrap it up, please. Start with the A's. All right, so <laughs> all my school life. So uh, as, you, as, as you've heard, uh, I'm, I'm knowledgeable, I'm dependable. Uh, I currently am the board chair for Friend Lab. I work with the budget every single day to make sure that 58 clients have a place to stay 18 and over children currently. Um, I work with DFACs, I open back the homes. So I'm not only from Valdosta, but I'm also for Valdosta. I'm for our children, I'm for our community, I'm for it looking better, I'm for it feeling better, and I'm for you doing as the city says, loving where you live. Thank you. <laughs> uh, when we're tired of the same old mundane and monotony that many politicians have to offer, we look to our younger generation to propel us in the direction of productivity. My question to you citizens is how long have we complained about a crisis council about the involvement and interest of the citizens? My commitment to you as a community leader is this, that I have no other commitments, no other agendas or plans that hinder me from serving you. While experience is appreciated, energy is necessary. The old are provided for their wisdom and the youth for their strength. 
Together we can effectively impact this community and to ensure that insight is given, influence is emitted, and the people are ever motivated, the message is ever clear. That's the reason I'm running. I'm Jeremy Stone, and I want your vote. <laughs> the reason I'm running is because I work for the city. I've been in these meetings. I've seen how, how they run these meetings. I see how people are discouraged by these meetings. I want to be in there to help change that. Remember I told y'all at, at the beginning, I had four fingers. Right. City government in Valdosta. It takes both, four votes on the city council That's right. to get anything implemented in Valdosta. I would like to be one of those people that want to vote to get stuff started in Valdosta. Because I truly want to make Valdosta a city without limits. <laughs> <laughs>